Welcome back to the Zolteus Gaming Channel. I'm your host, Zolteus. Here with some patch notes on Empire of Sin. Now, this is a pretty big set of uh, changes they made, so I figured I'd go over it. Uh, it's been a little while since I put out a video, uh, almost a week, but uh, people seem to like Empire of Sin. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do next. So I, I saw these patch notes, and I was like, you know what? Uh, pro not a lot of people are probably doing this on YouTube, so... Figured I'd go over some of the, as you can see, there's a ton of them. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna go over these. The first part are specifically the highlights, and the reason the highlights are a big deal is because of the very first one. Safe houses are now hidden. So uh, you know, I'm sure this was brought up to them multiple times, but I even brought it up in uh, even my boss reviews. It was way too easy to find a boss's safe house and then just go storm it and take all their stuff. Now, it doesn't make for good gameplay by any means, but it's still <laughs> it's still really easy to, uh, like, if, if you were determined enough, you could probably win the game in, like, the span of a game month. And that's not how that's supposed to be. Uh, Combat AI has, has improved uh, and provides more challenge, so... Uh, you're probably looking at uh, AI that uses smarter uh, routes to, to people or uses uh, cover smarter. So added some, you know, let's call them enhancements to, to combat. Uh, added a mini resolve option to avoid nuisance combat demands. So that is awesome. So if you just, if you have the uh, normal combat you can you can potentially hit that uh mini resolve and you won't have to worry about taking on the 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 little shrimp right you can worry about the big big bad guys like if you run into thugs no one expects you to have any problems let alone lose anyone in your crew you sh you could even do it on your own you shouldn't you shouldn't uh without some extreme bad luck be taken down so that's good fast travel has been limited so this doesn't surprise me uh, the reason this doesn't surprise me is because it was way too easy to just drop in on your enemies. Now, even with someone like Al Capone, who can you know do fi who can use his his special ability, hit all the guys, and then as they move, hit them again. You can still get yourself in a position to do something very similar uh, without dropping in on them. But I mean, you can all you have to do is right click the building and hit travel and it'll drop you right there so this fast travel has been limited uh portion is probably going to to make gameplay a little bit more challenging which is probably a good thing and you can no longer attack an enemy faction you're not at war with so that's probably big now i really hope it works both ways because even in some of the uh, videos i put out like they were attacking me without being at war with me and I, I was I was confused because I was just like, oh, I'm at war with them, and then I'd go attack them. And they're like, are you sure you want to start? Or are you sure you want to attack a, a non-hostile faction? I'm like, no, they they are hostile. They attacked me. So I hope this goes both ways. But I'm glad that this is a thing because it was it was getting very irritating. So those are the highlights. Uh, some of the specific changes uh, that we are going to look at is AI ignores temporary alliances when deciding to break an alliance. So that's one of those where I say, you know, finally. You, you were having alliances getting stupidly confused in gameplay because they had an alliance with one side on, or both sides on a, in a war, and they would end up attacking both. And it was just, it was crazy. So this has probably uh, made some rules for them. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, I like this, added separate notoriety gains for Raise, Ransack, and Smash Up. It, it almost made zero sense to do any of those because you didn't get anything out of it other than you know just transforming something into your own. And so, that that's good. 
uh, removed time free teleporting. So that was the big thing. That was what I was telling you guys in some of my previous videos is the micromanaging of your guys when places would get hit because as you would see people move and and loiter outside of your uh, outside of your rackets that were enemies you could literally just hit pause and right click the building and fast travel there and no game time would have would have gone through and it was it was great but it wasn't realistic so that's probably going to make it a little bit more even even scaled in the game so that's good uh i'm glad that they they finally got polish in, into the into the game uh but that doesn't really affect us or that doesn't really affect us uh so fixed instance, instances of disappearing actors when upgrading ambience so this this was a thing uh, specifically for, for even for quest uh, people is if if you upgraded something in your uh, most of the time for me it was speakeasies if you upgraded the ambience in your speakeasies the people that would be loitering in there they would disappear they'd still be there but they'd disappear and I couldn't find them and it made you know getting quests done that they were a part of really really painful so that's good uh Gangster talents now need to be unlocked. I'm actually very curious to see how this is implemented. Uh, so that'll be that'll be interesting to to find out because I, I would like to know you know what kind of restrictions they've placed and if there are specific things that you need to do in order to do that. Updated the hiring cost for starting gangsters. That's probably a good thing because if you do the tutorial, you get gangsters for free. But if you don't do the tutorial, you have to you have to pay for them. And the starting gangsters, I mean, it's great to have you know guys following you around. But you hire two starting gangsters, you're already down sixty, sometimes seventy percent of your starting funds. So uh, hopefully that's hopefully that's uh, the fix that they're they're meaning there, and that'll be good. Uh, made all loot in crates uncommon. I don't know if that's a good thing because that's the whole point of loot crates, right? Sometimes you get uh, rares uh, and even higher. So who, who knows how that will go. But uh, we're finished with those. We're going to look at the combat fixes and changes. Uh, and and that's, that's going to be a big thing. So reduce the overwatch angle for dark gun from 180 to 130 degrees. Uh, and for the LP08 pistol from 180, 150 degrees, that's probably a good thing. Uh, I've, I've found that the some of those weapons, specifically like the dart gun, uh, they're they're pretty OP uh, when it comes to Overwatch. So that's probably a good thing. Uh, another good thing, and I and I missed it, is allowed the bosses to gain notoriety if anyone in their faction performs an execution. I mean. What's the whole point of having henchmen if when they do stuff, you know, people don't know? Like, if I go join Al Capone's crew, you know, back in the 1920s and, you know, I execute someone, people are going to be like, oh, man, that guy's a part of Al Capone's crew. That's what they, man, Al Capone is, you know, a real badass. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, dude, that guy right there, he's badass. No, I'm, I'm a part of Al Capone's crew. They're... So I'm 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 glad that they put put that in there. That's uh, uh, that's gonna make notoriety gain a little bit easier because a lot of people perform. It's very easy to perform an execution uh, in the game because people seem to drop and you know be on life's you know on a lifeline for four four turns often enough that uh, you know hopefully it's not like five notoriety per execution or more because if that's the case it'll be like second month you'll be at a thousand notoriety but either way i'm glad that they added something like this because it, it was there was little little incentive for me to go perform an execution regardless of how awesome they look so that's good uh weapon balancing so this is probably a good thing they critical hit damage has been reduced across the board uh the reason they did this is because you <laughs> 
you got a decent enough weapon and you crit, you can take down, you know, all but bosses. Like it's it, it's it's pretty insane. But I mean, you're also being shot. You know, you have a rifle, and you happen to shoot someone in the head. The chances of them being able to function after that are pretty slim. Like if if we're talking real life, so you know. And they even said they removed instant kill modifier from you know a few of the the pieces and added knockback to you know a couple. But it, it's 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 going to be what it is. The this the whole point of these uh, fixes is they're they're waiting for feedback because they've probably you know dev moded this and now they're going to see what the reaction is in the community. I personally, uh, I like the the crit hit damage has been reduced across the board to an extent but i also don't like you know removing an instant kill modifier because sometimes that's what happens uh now maybe the percentage that it happens should be lower but i don't think it should be removed remove critical hit chance from a number of explosive weapons I mean, I could see that as long as it does, you know, decent damage, you know, considering it's an explosive. They did a lot of mission fixes, and I tell you what, it it needed it. It really needed it because some of these missions, like, you could, you could get yourself to a point to where you couldn't progress the mission. And then there were some missions that said, you know, do this. You would go do that, and then you would have to wait like a game day uh, for anything to actually happen. And it was there was a lot of polish that needed to, to to happen to some of these mission fixes. So it's good that they that they did that. Uh, CMA was a big thing, as you can see. There's CMA fixes, CMA fixes, CMA fixes. So. Uh, I'm glad they got uh, these fixes done. Uh, thug variants, so we're going to see some thug variants. Racket guard changes. So here's here's where we get into you know the massive portion of the gameplay. Same with safe house changes, but racket guard changes. So any old saves that were made uh, before these were introduced will keep their previous racket guards until that racket is upgraded or sold and purchased again. So. With each level of security upgrade, the guards will now become much tougher. <laughs> Good. Like, that was the whole point of me saying that you had to, you know, I, I was tired of the, the micromanagement of, of, you know, making sure I knew where enemies were attacking my places and dropping my guys in there because the, the guards, they would have, you know, they would have brass knocks and they'd have, like, 50 hit points. And I was just like, yeah, there's... Like they they keep on sending like six or seven people, they will they will destroy my guards, even if I had six or seven to defend. So I'm glad that the guards get much tougher. Uh, new tier of racket guard has been introduced uh, at security upgrade levels four and five, and good because the only incentive to upgrade uh, security was the fact that I just got more guys there. And it made the percentage go up when I said, no, I don't want to defend because those were also tedious battles. Um, and once you get, you know, so let's say a full neighborhood or, you know, close to 50 or 60 rackets, it just becomes so tedious. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that's a thing. Uh, these changes only attribute based uh, number of guards has not changed and there have been no changes made to the guards inventory so unfortunately it looks like we're not getting any guards you know if you have guards with brass knucks that's just what they're going to have but at a minimum the attributes have changed so they're tougher and they can potentially deal more damage with those with those weapons so so that's good um i never had this issue but apparently there were racket guards not being replenished so i'm glad that got fixed so faction changes Allowing the boss to gain notoriety if anyone in their faction performs an execution. So that one was a big one. We talked about that. Apparently, the spiffing Brif, uh, Brit sorry, uh, uh, found a, uh, a faction exploit. I may have to check out that video, but uh, they fixed that, so it's no longer there. So if I watch the video and I like what happened, I may be disappointed now, but either way. Uh, 
Faction AI can no longer attack buildings outside of war. Uh, existing attacks outside of war and older saves are canceled. So that's good. Uh, I was getting tired of, of my you know rackets being attacked, like I had mentioned before, by AI that I wasn't at war with. Uh, I remember specifically it was the first month I was not at war with anyone. As a matter of fact, every single uh, boss I ran into I had a, uh, an agreement with. And all of a sudden, I just got attacked by one of them. And I was like, what's going on? So that's good. Diplomacy option for retribution demands has been removed. All right. Was never truly interested in that one. But now the big thing. Serious, or serious changes specifically for safe houses. So... Safe houses now start as hidden. White buildings you can't interact with. Discovery chance increases by 1% a week from meeting a faction. So, you know, after 100 weeks, if for some reason you haven't discovered it, you will discover uh, uh, a faction after you meet someone within that faction. Once a month, a safe house discovery chance checked, and the safe house is revealed if the check passes. So... This is one of those ways where it, ex it it prolongs gameplay, it extends gameplay life. And I like that because it was, you know, half the time they would say they would want to sit down with you. They would tell you where they are. And I, I was like, oh, okay. And sometimes it would be to just one of their rackets, but sometimes it would be to their actual safe house. And I was just like, oh, okay, thanks for showing me where you do business. Uh, now I know if you tick me off, I'm going to come over here and, you know, destroy this particular faction. It was it was kind of immersion destroying. Uh, diplomacy screen shows your current discovery chance. Awesome. Uh, taking over that faction's racket further increases the discovery chance and checks. See, and dynamic percentage based on uh, faction rack rackets remaining. So, I mentioned this in a previous video. I, one of the things that I said that I wanted to see a change was. We don't instantly discover, and we shouldn't be able to take over a, a safe house, even if we knew where it was, until we got, you know, some point with that faction. Like, we've taken over so many rackets, or we've taken out so many of their guys, or, you know, so on and so forth. So, this is a, uh, this is a, stab at doing something like that and i think it will make gameplay that much better so that's good event fires on safe house uh event fires on safe house being discovered okay i got it uh so in this case an event happens when you find a safe house so cool uh guards don't show up outside of the safe house until the safe house is discovered by the player i can imagine it would be very funny that guards would be standing outside of a as they call it, white building you can't interact with, and people not go, hmm, I wonder what that is, you know. So that's good. Ensuring taking over safe houses correctly, assign, okay. So that's good. Uh, previously, when I would assign lieutenants, they I, they would, st like, it was 50-50. Sometimes they would be, I couldn't interact with them, or I would be like, all right, let's go, and they'd be like, okay, let's go. And I was like, what's the point of assigning lieutenants? Like the whole point of assigning lieutenants to take over a safe house is that that's their job now. Um, so, all right, cool. Fixed issue with gangsters flagged as a way being able to be assigned to this, to a safe house. Yeah, that was, that was a thing. So like I had a mole and uh, I had someone injured actually uh, at my safe house. And when I took over a safe house, I think it was the second one after both of those... Uh, situations that happened uh at the set that second safe house they were both able to be selected as a lieutenant and i was just like wait this is my mole and this person is injured how are they like the whole point of the injury is that i can't access them and the whole point of someone being a mole is that i can't like they're they're doing something else so uh looks like they're they're making those changes and that's good but uh for the most part i mean that's it for uh, for these changes, and it looks like they're getting better and better. Uh, I'm glad to see that because the, there were a lot of issues with the game to start. I'm glad that they, you know, were already on to you know the third patch or the third major patch, right? But 
I, I think if they keep improving the game, this game is going to get better and better, and I think it will be, uh, I think it'll be more universal to players who like uh, simulation games, who like uh, strategy games, because uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of you know Im- immersing to to play a game like a a gangster racket management. Because I mean, you look at Mafia, uh, that series, people loved it uh, in. Empire Sin is supposed to be like that, only it's supposed to be, you know, about those roaring 20s with Al Capone. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, more good changes to this game. But that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, Like and subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you in the next video.